Alrighty. <laughs> We're back. I mean, I could just LP this into like all gold everything. But honestly, I think that would be pretty boring to watch. I just put it up because it's like a pretty enjoyable game I happen to be playing at the moment. No real other reason. Uh, should be playing Akami and a bunch of other stuff, really. But it's like, you know, the great thing about my YouTube channel is essentially I'm just doing it when I have time, when I'm bored. Uh, I'm not really attempting anything fancy uh, where I'm like, you know, Panigale. Do a time attack with Panigale. I haven't actually done any time attacks yet. I tried one off screen or oh, me. I think I discarded that. I discarded that um, attempt because it was when I didn't know how to drive a bike, so, on this game. Uh, always like the Panigale. They're very expensive. <laughs> One day, like, the great thing I love about bikes, I always talk about this, is you can get some of the best bikes available in production, and they are a fraction of the price of their car equivalent. But the Ducati is pretty high up there, and a Panigale 1299, it, you're paying like the same you pay for like a brand new Honda Jazz, you know? Well, maybe not that cheap, but <laughs> you know? Oh, I should have braked that. And yeah, honestly, I think I'd have more fun because I'm all about the speed and trying to like attempt to kill myself in a weird way. You know, this morning I forgot who Peter Gabriel was. That was a weird time for me. <coughs> I was sat in the shower thinking, well, I was driving back last night on my e-bike from having coffee with a friend. And uh, it was a nice sunny day, and I was, it suddenly popped in my head with Salisbury Hill, and I was like, who, who did Salisbury Hill again? And <laughs> for some reason... I couldn't work out who it was, and I kept saying it's like, it's David something. <coughs> it's something Gil? <laughs> uh, something G, something G, and then my brain went, David Gilmore? And I was like, no, that's the guitarist from Pink Floyd, you idiot. <laughs> I just sat there like, what is it? Oh, shit, 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 that's hard. That's a hard turn. I got penalty time, so I doubt this is going to do it this time, but... Got three laps to try and get this. Ooh! That was hidden. Um, yeah, so that was quite fun. And then I forgot who Wesley Snipes was this morning. I was sat there talking, talking thinking in my, in my brain about movies that I want to watch because I recently got my airplay working because I had to buy a new TV recently. That's why there was a gap in LPs. And um, like anybody's riveted on my schedule. And um, yeah, uh, I can airplay now. So I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to be watching movies. And I'm like, I'm going to put Terminator 2 up, Aliens, Demolition Man. Because I've never actually watched Demolition Man, which is like a weird admission for me. And it's like, it's been a while for the other two as well. And I'm sat there like, I'd probably like, you know, it's an almost guaranteed cert that I'd like them because I liked everything else that was happening around them. And it's like weird that I never sat down and watched Demolition Man. You know, it's like, why, you know, because it's not something that you just see that's playing, actually. It's one of these weird ones where people forget, kind of forget. It's like, like, Stand By Me. I watched that around a friend's house once because he had it. And he was like, you never watched it? And it's just one of those films that no one ever talks about, but everyone knows. 
what everyone thinks is a classic, but it's not the first classic to come to mind of that era, of that genre, you know? But I've watched every Rocky movie, well, all the ones that mattered, up to four, basically, and then I kind of gave up. Um, I watched most of the Rambos, and there's just weird gaps. Like, I watched Commando, and then I watched Double Impact, but I didn't watch Kickboxer. <laughs> like, you know, so it's like I'm watching really random, like Jean-Claude Van Damme is spotty, but I know Commando is Schwarzenegger, but I was going to go somewhere else. Whereas like, I missed some Schwarzenegger films, but it's like, I think a lot of people missed uh, some Schwarzenegger films. Because some Schwarzenegger films, they're a bit like, what is this? <laughs> I never watched Running. Was it called Running Man? It was based off of that, you know, where he's like, was Sub-Zero, now Plane Zero, that one. I never watched that. I watched The Sixth Day, though, and Last Action Hero, because... Yeah, <laughs> Last Action Hero was awful. I had a good Megadeth song that was written for it. But, uh, big flop, and there's a reason it wasn't that great. So yeah, I'm gonna have a film bonanza later. There was a bunch of films that I wanted to watch uh, that I like. For some reason, it just never... Never really got out there, you know? You know, I just never watched it, because, like, I was born in 1992, and a lot of the films that people around me were saying, you need to watch this, were films that were so, like, edgy and violent for the time, and came out in the 1980s, so it's, like, very clear that it wasn't just shown to me on birth. Hey, have you watched Robocop? Of course I've not watched Robocop. <laughs> like, you know, no, I have now. But, it, like, very in, like retrospect, because I wasn't born when Robocop first came out, or if I was, I was definitely not 18. <laughs> like, you know, um, not that, you know, it would have stopped me at 14 from watching it, but, like, you know what I'm saying. No way I would have just bumbled into Robocop at 2, <laughs> like, you know. So, um, a lot of this is, like, people saying, you haven't watched this? And me going, no, because I was not born. And I'm shaming you for not being born. And you're like, okay. But like, I actually went back and I watched a load of westerns, a load of these films, a load of Tarantino. I love Tarantino's work. And a lot of stuff that came out before I was born. Did I do it? No, I didn't. Sad. Is that supposed to be best lap time because I fucked up free time? <laughs> nice bike. I will never afford it. And if I do, I'm sure a racist cop will try and steal it from me here. Oh man. It's quite a while off as well, isn't it? I drive like an old man. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of films I have on my list. Uh, Kickboxer was one of them. Some I just want to rewatch because I think I watched the predecessor. Like I watched Terminator One like ten times. I watched Terminator Two like once, and it's like I don't know why. I just you know I watched Alien loads of times, but didn't watch Aliens more than once. I watched Predator One and Two. I watched Predator 1 a bunch, watched Predator 2 once, I was like, oh, okay, and then I, um, <clears throat> then I watched, um, do this one, it's a race, that was quite hard to drive, I've tried that on screen, we haven't tried these, but we tried this, 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 I've tried this off screen, but we'll do it later. Enjoy the Panigale 1199. <coughs> the 1199. I'm sure that's how I was supposed to say, not the 1199 or something. The 1199 Panigale S. 2014 from the Tugati. I'm just deliberately mispronouncing everything. 
<laughs> nice color of black on this. I like that. I do like that a lot. I, I notice this game really doesn't have a lot of color options. It's like, you can have it in Ducati Red. And you're like, and... And they're like, nah, that's it. So when you get a color option, you're like, ooh. <laughs> To be fair, you've ever walked into a Ducati showroom, it's basically red, carbon, black, white. <laughs> and then the scramblers are the only other colors. Ooh, this is nice. I like. If you subscribe to my Patreon now and buy me a Ducati, I will LP more dating games. I don't know. Oh, God. So my friend gives me uh, the dating games because <clears throat> he thinks they're funny but he doesn't want to play them. So he makes me play them for my YouTube channel. Well, he doesn't make me. He just says, I've gifted you one. And you're like, awesome. I don't know how I stayed on the bike then. You kind of lent on the throttle. <laughs> thing. Mm. I like this bike. I like this a lot. And uh, he's like, whoa. This pigeon dating sim is really fun. You should do every ending. And I'm like, what, 15 endings? Well, he didn't say every ending. But I was a bit like, oh, no. Because some of them are hilarious. But, like, I'm going through and I'm thinking, some of these are just not going to be made for a fun LPing session. And a lot of it is read the same stuff again or load a save state. And I'm not very good at save scumming. I like the noise, I like the shade, I like everything. This bike was born for me. Shame my paycheck does not equivalent. <laughs> gives me a lot of dating things and says that would be funny you should play that and then he watches all of them and I'm like okay fair fair he was he's watching them and like you know he's giving me gifts and so I what I <laughs> occasionally um, but like every time I finish like a couple or like every time I finish one he's like next you will play this one <laughs> and like buys me another one and I'm like uh, <laughs> like you know because um I'm like, no, no offense, but I just kind of did this for a laugh and to play games I like so I can talk bullshit whilst playing games I like. And while they're funny, it is a bit like my, my channel has <laughs> turned into dodgy dating game channel and I'm just like, uh. I have to admit it was quite entertaining though. There's some bits to it where I'm like, okay, that's not bad, that's kind of fun. But like, um... He was going to get me the daddy dating simulator next, and I was like, oh. <laughs> like, you know, at least we've already gotten past the gate, which is Honey Pop, because I played Honey Pop, because he, well, I gifted him Honey Pop, and he's married, and I gave it to him for Christmas as a joke among some actual games he wanted, and he installed it and played it, and neither of us realized there were hentai scenes. <laughs> he was just like, they're like, uh, and his wife was like, ah, uh, and I was like, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it had porn in it. <laughs> and now it became a regular thing where they send me stupid, like, games like this, and the hope that we will recreate the awful humor of, like, oopsie, I sent you porn. How ludicrous, because we're British. <laughs> like, you know. But, you know, we haven't got to that point where, like, oh, I'm, just, I'm just sending you porn now. <laughs> like, you know. Right, we haven't got to that yet, so, um, like, deliberately sending you porn. And it's like, I can't YouTube that, you know. I can't put that on YouTube because it will get taken down because it's hentai. And um, he was like, 
he got it, and then out of curiosity, I was like, because I was single at the time, and bored. <laughs> I was like, wait, I've got to see this now. And I, like, it's kind of really, like, really nicely put together. It's got a great addictive bubble bobble style, no, like, bejeweled style thing going on with it. And I was sat there like, you know what, this is kind of fun. And it's like, you know, I, and I was like, oh, yeah, like, waifus. And, like, um, it was just a bit being a bit embarrassing. And I was playing it, and I played the whole game. <laughs> like, you know, I got 100% in it, and I was like, wow. This game is weirdly addictive, and everyone was like, you play that skeevy porn game where girls, like, show up and they take their tops off and you come all over them, and I was like, hey, man, it's called art. <laughs> like, you know, it was like, you can't, you can't defend this. Um, then he gave me one called Sakura Angels, and that was really unentertaining. And it's just an audio book, a bad audio visual novel, an audio book, visual novel um, narrative, which doesn't make sense. And occasionally you walk in on them whilst they're trying to have a shower and you see under boob or something, you know. But I got second. Unless the penalty time fucked me. Oh, second. That's a nice bike. Yeah, I, I don't want to degrade my YouTube channel into just awkward dodgy dating. It's kind of like slice of life anime in the sense of like, it's not really like entertaining. It's just kind of like funny. It is entertaining, but it's not like awe inspiring. It's not like, you know, it's like comparing Jojo to like a slice of life anime. So I'm sat here playing like Doom and shit and I'm having fun and I'm like, yeah, look at them. And like playing like pretty cool games and shit. Just for my own entertainment, I don't do this for like attention really. I'm just like, oh, you know, and it helps me practice my sound mixing from way back. And, uh, yeah, all that attractive bots, but whatever. It's all the silvers. Going for gold. I, uh, well, I'm not going with this, but, uh, I gotta show it, haven't I? Because we've shown everything else. It's fast, and it bucks me off every five seconds, and it's sliding all over. It's trying to kill me. There's no Sadichi. Yeah, I speak Italian. <laughs> if by speak Italian, it's I understand when something is like very clearly a number <laughs> like having in Sanichi. It's not, is it now? Now I'm an idiot. Nah, uh, who cares? We all knew that. Uh, it's a nice bike. This. But. You'll see. You can hear. You can hear the heat in the engine. That's the sound of, like, death. If you fault the others, Buck, look at this shit. Every gear changes. Kangaroo hopping. It's like, nope. I want to kill you and your soul. That. That pitch. <laughs> trying to fucking kill you. But look at that speed! <laughs> Please don't kill me, I want to live! I want to live! Not a time to talk about dating sims. Oh! It's like, yeah, you know, you're getting some humor out of the dating sims, but it's just not as action packed or exciting as like playing a fighting game, which I haven't done for a while, or playing this, it's just like, it's not really like much is happening, <laughs> I just killed that guy. See, it thirsts for blood! <laughs> it's thirsting, it's angry, it barks at the moon, it does not care this bike, it's just like, yes, blood for the blood god. 
06 was a weird time for Ducati, apparently. <laughs> We're just going to make things that attempt to murder you. Good job I have stand powers. I make a lot of JoJo references, I realize. And like nobody understands them, because nobody I know watched JoJo except for one guy. <laughs> And he's like, oh yeah, it was cool. And then you're like, you know, you just say dumb shit from it all the time. It does grip right. <laughs> bye bye, king. I'm the one true king. There can be only one. Bursts for blood. Cut this corner every time. <laughs> these these men they have no fear. But like when it's so fast and so high attack, this bike. Um, it actually means I'm slower because I'm braking heavier to get around the corners because I'm so nervous using the bike because it just sounds like it's trying to murder me. And that was just me feathering the throttle out and it's trying to go, <laughs> like you pull out from underneath me like, no, I refuse. That's a nice smooth acceleration out and it was still like, no. No! Look at this. That was come on the grass. Like, the front end is just waving in the breeze, man. I can feel that it's not on the floor. <laughs> like, you know. I can break hard. Whoa! I can break harder than that, I say. <laughs> I push the throttle slightly too hard. There's literally just like. Like that. Wow, fuck me, I guess. It doesn't want me to live. This bike does not want me to live. It also doesn't want the AI to live, because it's not two of them off. Just like no, <laughs> no. Don't have enough badges to train this bike. Okay, that's the way you want it to go today. <laughs> and this is, I like this bike. I really do. Uh, I feel like I can't drive it. <laughs> like. If you slightly turn and it's trying to steer out from underneath you, you put the foot down. So don't put the foot down, you say, and it's like, yes, and I end up eighth all the time. Because it really wants <laughs> you to put the foot down. Full traction control, by the way. I just stuck it on full from now on, just to make my life a little easier. See? Just... You see it's laying its rubber down, trying to come out. Okay. <laughs> I say no deal. We'll try that again. Only I'll actually pull up to the racing line and brake faster. And cut the corner like a sun bitch. Ooh, ooh, ooh. If it wasn't for the traction control, I would have come off there because the traction control is holding it up and it's going. Mm, mm, mm. It's fighting the control. That was. That was. Oh no, too much blood that time. Damn. Yeah, 12, fair enough. I think I got 9th for the normal penalty time.
big penalty time. Look at that. Well, I didn't say like that penalty time. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the one time you'll see me drive the Desmo Sudici, unless it literally forces me to drive it for a time attack at some point, which I'm pretty sure it does. If we're going to do a 100% playthrough, I don't know what happens if you do that. You get a trophy. I don't know if it plays a screen. Because <laughs> this game is really happy with its screens. Whereas, like, look, you did the thing. And you're like, thanks, I guess. Here's a slideshow of the bikes you were just driving. And you're like, cool. Oh, the multi strata. <sighs> I wish I understood you, multi strata. But you're a complicated lover. It's time. To the Street Fighter. I tried the black. So now we're going to do the red. Two colors. Black or red. We used to do yellow, but no one bought it. So we stopped mixing the paint for it. may get it in white, maybe, if we have one in white. Hey, I prefer it to KTM's official colors, so I'm really not, I've always said to my mate, he's always like, man, let's go look at the KTM's, I'm like, fine, and it's like, they make some nice bikes, but I look at the horrible orange, white, and black scheme that they've got going on. It's like, it's fine if they do it Kawasaki, where it's predominantly black and orange is the accent tone. But a lot of the time it's white, with orange all over it as well, like a mess. And you're like, oh. And for someone who only really likes the aesthetics and going fast... <laughs> You know, because I'm an idiot, like I've said a lot. I will try the monster tree calori later. Tree calori, tree calori, tree calori, piccolo. I tried to watch Dragon Ball today. I, Dragon Ball is, again, another one of those pieces of media where it's like... I've had everyone say, you like this, right? And I'm like, yes. And you like this, right? Yes. Well, why not do, why not watch this? And I'm like, nah. And they get frustrated with me. And it's like, Dragon Ball. The early days of Dragon Ball. It's like, you like martial arts, right? Yeah. You watch anime, right? Yeah. Did you try Dragon Ball? Nah. And they're like, why? I just don't like the style. And they're like, I've heard it's a, there's a lot of episodes. And they're like, same with Naruto, although that's way worse for filler and stuff, although Dragon Ball probably has to have filler. I'm also spoiled on almost all of the Naruto stuffs. The Naruto's, the Naruto's. Because, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I know the ending. I've watched people LP the games, which is based off of the main story, and I've gone, oh, is that it? Okay. I just never liked it. I always thought it was stupid, and unfortunately the fan base is very cringy at times, and they're like, I like to Naruto run everywhere, and you're like, oh, you're an embarrassment. It's not martial arts. Much like Dragon Ball, it's not martial arts, it's people screaming and wearing orange for some reason. And, um, but I'm happy to try and attempt Dragon Ball after all these years of shitting on Dragon Ball. I am now going to attempt to watch Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super, and Dragon Ball Z. Because I've heard those are the good ones. <sighs> Whether I'll get anywhere with them. Gotta try these things, right? It might be the most important thing, or the most... I might become a huge fanboy and be like, Yo, power levels, though. You never know. Because it's weird. It's like, people know the characters of Dragon Ball. I know them by looking at them. I know their names and shit. I know fairly prominent elements of their fights. <laughs> like, 
oh, sell this, you know, like, boo this, you know. But I couldn't tell you anything about the actual plot or story or what happened in Dragon Ball. Even though Dragon Ball's been around and has not exactly been left spoiler-free around me for life. It's like JoJo in the sense that people say, hey man, in JoJo this happens and you're like, oh cool. <laughs> you don't get pissed off that someone spoiled a stand power or like, because you want to see that, you know? And it's the same with Dragon Ball where it's like, oh man, there's this guy, right? And then like... He, he's really powerful and he punches this guy really hard and you're like, oh, cool. You know, you're not really like, oh, shit, you're spoiling it for me. You know, it's just like, you just sounds like something that makes you want to watch it rather than um, something that nullifies the point of watching it now. There's this old man and he's a pervert and there's a wrestler called Satan and you're like, haha, that sounds kind of funny. So, you know, Version. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll start watching it, but I haven't done that yet. Never a big fan of Naruto. No offense to Naruto fans. I understand why you like it, but like, um, I just kind of had it vicariously around me and via osmosis I kind of know what happens in Naruto and I haven't had to spend 2,000 episodes getting there with filler episodes where he fights a fucking ostrich or blows his ass out eating ramen. So I'm just sat there like, well, you know, I know all the jokes and I know all of the bullshit and I know all of the major plot points and I know who dies when and I know Rock Lee's fucking cool. That's all I feel like I need to know, and I've seen the scenes where Rock Lee is cool, and I've seen the dumb shit, and I feel like that's all I need to know. You know? I feel like everything past that is like, you know, I've been, I've heard of it from a podcast, or I've like, some, a friend has said, man, it gets really fucking dumb after this scene, and you're like, oh, okay. I'm winning. Nice bike, the Street Fighter. One of my mates hate the Street Fighter. I say to them, hey man, GK Street Fighter looks cool, and they're like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> and I'm like, Shut up. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but then I looked at the Harley Davidson, what was it called? The Bronx? Something like that. Their Street Fighter. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. And everyone's like, no, it looks like shit. And I was like, I thought it was not cool. Probably wouldn't buy it. At, like, you know, it's the same with the, the UK Street Fighter. It's like, if you said this or a monster, I would probably just get the monster because it's like I don't think this is gonna like you know it's not the same really if you said to me here's a Harley Davidson Bronx or a Sportster 1200 I'm gonna go well I'll give you the Sportster yeah, but like you know if it was cheaper I would probably buy it you know so there's that I used to really love Harleys, man. And then everyone in the motorcycle community tells you how bad Harleys are. And you go, oh. <clears throat> then you look at them. Then you sit on them. Then maybe you test drive one. And you go, oh. And it's really depressing. Let's go to a new era. All smart. Remind me. Okay. Head to heads. They haven't done a head to head. 
But the head-to-head -head is basically, there's like, guy is driving slowly and a guy you have to chase after like it's a track day. Okay. Oh, I didn't mean to press this. It's saving something that I said, fuck, go back. Okay. I don't remember pressing X. Yeah, so I press circle. <coughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, like, still to this day, if you gave me a Harley, say a 48, or the Sportsters, the 1200 Sportsters of any design, really, I wouldn't say no, but nowadays, or if I got a good deal uh, on a used one and it wasn't riddled with, like, rust or needed a lot of repairs or, like, everything that was consumable had burnt out on it, like, I don't know, the brake pads and the tires and all that shit, then maybe, you know, I would get one, but, like, we're against Walker. Oh, Paul Walker. He's back. Oh. Um. Can someone explain what happened? We were following Walker there, weren't we? Hold your position. Can we just do that again? We can do this again. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Something went wrong, didn't it? Shall we try again? Oh my god, that's so funny. I was like, why are we following Walker? Then my guy just goes flying off the corner, and I'm like, okay, rewind, go to the, like, the thing, we'll try that again, and it just goes, shit, the camera went wrong. <laughs> Shut the thing down. Oh my god, I've never seen that before. That's amazing. I'm glad I recorded that. I'm glad we got that on screen. I've never seen that before in my life. <laughs> oh, Lord. So we're back. <laughs> I'm not going to cut any of that though, that was hilarious. Um, ever since you have started LPing, I've been getting a lot more errors and a lot more weird shit and I've been recording it and been like, yo, <laughs> got a bad error. Maybe it didn't like the head to head. So we haven't done any 80s or 70s this time around, so let's do some 80s. See, I've done a lot of them. Paso. Singore, Singore, it's time attack. Track day. We need 12 overtakes when I couldn't drive, the best was 11. I think we can do this. The 851. Oh man, that was bad. talking about it kind of threw off the whole thing didn't it talking about Harleys everyone who I've ever spoken to is like all the new guys are like man I've always wanted a Harley and every guy who's not like blinkered by the idea that American industry is the best so people who aren't American uh, are like no they're terrible they're heavy they rust 
they fall apart, they're expensive. They lose, they depreciate like fucking crazy, even for a motorcycle. Yeah, you just don't bother. I had nothing but problems. And I've never heard anyone say a good thing, and it kind of makes me sad. Because I was like, they were always my dream bike growing up. And everyone's like, dude, why? And I have transmitted, I have kind of just spread out and gone, you know what, there are a lot of good bikes out there, so at least, you know, there's that. It gives you the opportunity to go, there's a lot more out there than just those. And there's some really impressive bikes, and if it weren't for my mates who also all really liked motorcycles, I wouldn't have even heard of half of these bikes, and I wouldn't have been looking at them. And then I just, my interest really peaked. And now I'm, um... <laughs> yeah. I can't say that even though I've been only playing this Ducati game for a while, I can't say I'm like a diehard Ducati fan. I just think that they're pretty cool. I think they're neat. But if you know, I had a game that said, here's like, I don't think I'd buy the all Suzuki game. Ugh. Uh, but like, if you were to say to me, I don't know, here's an all Kawasaki game, I probably would buy that. Maybe. I don't know. Kawasaki have a cruiser. But every bike company nowadays seems to have a cruiser or like a kind of cafe racer style thing or like a classic vintage style bike or a bobber of some kind, you know? So you don't really have to sit and just put up with Harley Davidson's being bad if they're expensive. They really turn into the Apple Mac of like the bike industry where only architects and orthodontists and people who are like really not the rebellious type anyway are buying them for a midlife crisis. No real, like, hardcore bikers buying them anymore, I don't think, because they're just too expensive. But, like, you know, who has the budget for these things nowadays? And it's often the people who are in the middle classes or upper middle classes. I think I did well. I had more than last time. Let's play a silver. Oh, it was a bronze. I wouldn't call that a king. Bronze King. Oh, I needed one more for silver. Oh well. I'm more about showcasing what this is about now. Um, yeah. Uh, so, you know, Kawasaki has a cruiser called the Vulcan, which looks pretty interesting. I really got into cruisers just for their lines, but then I started to realize what I liked about Harleys were their customizability, and I thought, well, you can't do that with just anything, man. It's got to be like a specific brand, because I was an idiot, and I didn't really know, and I didn't have any friends before that really did that stuff, so I wasn't aware what the deal actually is. But there's actually a lot you can do with, like, there's a whole, the Cafe Racer movement really, like, I started looking that up and looking at what kind of stuff you can do with those things, and it actually drew me in a lot more than, like, choppers and uh, cruiser-style things really ever did. Um, so uh, I'm a lot more interested in that kind of era of motorcycle that is popular for, like, modification now, which is tends to be, like, that kind of era of, like, 70s to 80s Japanese uh bikes like the Hondas and stuff of those times, the CBs and things, and the uh, <coughs> the Suzukis and the Viragos and all of that stuff. I really got my interest, because uh, I feel like, you know, customization is where it's at, kind of, because it's like, you're really making it yours, you know? You can do a little bit, though, with the super sports and stuff, but you feel like you probably can't do it better than they did it, you know? Whereas with something that's like a clapped out old 70s uh, Honda CB that's seen better days, you're like, well, you know, if I fuck it up by doing a massive mechanical error, I'm not going to cry too much because it was barely working to start with. I just like the idea. 
<laughs> Let's just observe the horribly rigid, uninfused audience. They just stood there like, like mannequins. Ooh. Destroying Japan's cultural heritage with my Ducati by slamming it into every wall. Yeah, so there was that. I've never actually driven a cruiser to this day. I've been meaning to get on one for so long. I've driven a lot of different styles of bikes and been a passenger on a few, but like I still haven't gotten on a cruiser or a bobber. And I've been always like interested, you know? You know, maybe something with a lower CC that's less expensive. There's a lot of things like the Suzuki Avenger. It's called in Nepal and uh, Central Asia. I don't know what that is. It's this, I think it's the GZ. It's based it's just like the GZ, I think. Uh, but I think it's wider and a little more powerful, like higher CC range. Or maybe it's the same. They just renamed it. Um... <clears throat> and I always thought, well, you know, they're pretty cheap. I could just get one of those 300cc cruiser. Shouldn't be a problem. Could get that around the corner. See if I can deal with the ride height, you know. See if I'm in, into that kind of vibe of thing. Because it's like, it's a very big, like, style, you know. <laughs> That's often tied to the rock and metal community. So I thought, oh, you know, like, I've always had, like, you've seen them around. And you're like, oh, yeah, that looks cool. Low slung, growly. A lot of chrome, you know, very like Judas Priest kind of shit. And it's like, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I could get into that. But, uh, oh. <laughs> see, they stay perfectly stationary, those guys. Look at them. Weird. That tree popped into existence there. Yeah, so uh, I just want to get on as many bikes as possible, so I'm probably going to do my license at some point over here, because uh, it's a piece of piss over here I mentioned before. Uh, and then I'm probably going to just, when you move into the southeast, which I'm going to do eventually, they don't give a shit. You don't really need a license, they just leave you alone. They just go, oh, whatever, yeah. If you can buy it and you don't crash it, it's fine. And, you know, if you don't draw attention to yourself and act like an idiot, you'll just be left alone. Uh, well, when it comes to bike riding, just, you know, be aware of theft if it's a nice one. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. So, yeah, you know, I'm going to try and, like, just test out, drive, rent, they rent a lot over there, renting out a load of different bikes um, when they get the chance, <clears throat> and then maybe get something like a little Honda, or a Yamaha, or like a Suzuki or something, and just mess around with it in my garage, that's the dream really. And then have like maybe another bike, which is the if all else fails and you fuck up your project bike, bike which you can use to get to work and hang out and stuff, you know, so you like maybe you have a nice bike that you don't fuck around with, then you have a bike that's like kind of clapped out that you just mess around with in your spare time. That, that would be the dream for me. It's a humble dream. Humble dream. Yeah, don't know where I'll go for that though. Every place I go, it's like there's different rules governing motorcycles and you've got to be like a certain echelon of the hyper elite in some cases to get on one and be licensed. Other places are just expensive. Other places it's like just heavily regulated. Other places it's like they don't give a shit. Get on the bike. 
do whatever the fuck you want. You got money, buy the bike. And they just don't care. <clears throat> and it's really different. Like the rules change a lot country to country in uh, Asia. Whereas in Europe, they tend to they tend to be on a similar kind of page with in terms of the EU regs. Where everything kinda has to abide by similar levels of testing and like noise and stuff. And you know, it's normally like what's banned in one part of the EU is banned all over. <clears throat> but um in, you know, just because something's like okay in Japan, it doesn't mean it's okay in China. So if something is okay in Korea, it doesn't mean it's going to be okay in Thailand. And it's like they they all they don't have like a kind of similar kind of style of governing things for their continent. They don't have like a union of countries, and they kind of like try and normalize for the whole continent and make things easier for trade because a lot of these countries don't want to talk to one another. Like Laos and uh, Vietnam, Thailand, and China with everybody, and you know that kind of stuff, and it raises too many questions that would eventually lead to disputes, which could le then lead to war. Because it'd be like you know, imagine having these guys in all in a room that a lot of problems would come, especially if Taiwan was allowed to see. Because <clears throat> um, China would have a problem with Taiwan being allowed to see, because they don't recognize Taiwan as a separate country. So you can see why they don't have their equivalent of an EU over here. Which would just be an AU, I assume. Asian Union. <coughs> hmm. Yeah. It'd be interesting. It'd probably make life either easier or more difficult for expats, I don't know. Depends on where you are, I see. But yeah, I've heard that some of the strictest regions in Asia for motorcycles are basically, I think, Japan, Hong Kong, and uh, Singapore, and then some of the loosest have seemingly been Nepal, um, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, kind of places. I don't know about Laos personally, but I can't see it being much different from the neighboring regions from what I've heard, because I've heard of people just getting on bikes over there as well. So really, it's just a case of, like, if it was up to me, I would probably move over to a place where it's like, if the opportunity arises, to a place where I can just get on a bike with as little hassle as possible and there's not very much bands, you know, not very many bands, like, and there's decent trade, you know, so it's like, if I want, if I got the money from my job and saved it, I could go out and buy a certain type of bike, you know? <clears throat> anyway, that's the dream, the tiny dream that I always end up talking about. I'm going to leave it there because my laptop's on shit battery. And we'll come back next time for more completionist bullshit of this game that's going to have a really lame ending, I think. Ciao for now. Yeah.